Good morning, everybody. Order. I call this meeting to order. This is the Standing Committee on Human Resources. I'm Nolan Young, MLA, Chair of the Committee. And today's meeting will be an organizational meeting uh, to set some general meeting practices. It's also an agenda setting and to choose topics and witnesses uh, for the next six meetings or so. In addition to that, we will review agencies, boards, and commissions, or ABCs. And we have guests from the Executive Council office um, here today to give us a brief overview of the ABC's appointments process. I ask right now if you could put your phones on silent. And please keep your mask on during the meeting unless you're speaking. As chair, I am exempt from the rule. Mine will be on. Uh, before you speak, please wait for me to say your name or for the red light on your microphone to turn on and there's no need to touch your microphone. Now I ask the committee members to introduce themselves for the record by stating their name and their constituency. Larry Harrison, Colchester, Muscadabit Valley. Dave Ritzy, Truro Bible Hill, Millbrook, Salmon River. Johnny McDonald, Hans East. Good morning, I'm Melissa Sheehy Richard, MLA for Hans West. Susie Hansen, MLA for Halifax Needham. Good morning, Kendra Coombs, MLA for Cape Breton Centre, Whitney Pier. Good morning, Ali Doale, Halifax Arbdell. Braden Clark, MLA for Bedford South. And for the purposes of Hansford, I'd like to recognize the presence of Legislative Council, Gordon Hebb, and the Legislative Committee Clerk, Judy Cavanaugh. Uh, we have a couple of guests here today from the Executive Council office. Uh, I'd ask if they'd, uh, they have a PowerPoint for us, if they'd like to introduce themselves, maybe go through some of the process for appointments. Yeah. Good morning. Thank you very much for having us. I'm Karen Stone. I'm the Director of the Governance and Accountability Unit with the Executive Council Office. And on my left is Maura Stevens, a Governance Consultant. And on my right is Sean Mosier, also a Governance Consultant. And what you see before you is the, is the team that uh, puts together the uh, ABC appointments that you have here that, that were kind of the final or one of the later stages before they reach this committee. I want to start off. Oh, do, do you want me to start? Okay. I want to start off by congratulating all of you on your uh, successful uh, win at, in the election. And uh, most of you are new faces to me, except for Mr. Harrison, who is a uh, also a member at the same golf course that we play at. But we were we were just kind of whining a little bit that we didn't get much uh, game time in this year. His was because of an election. Mine was for uh, preparing a host. So. It, Anyway, we are absolutely delighted that uh, this meeting has been convened and we're really looking forward to the schedule that you create so that we can uh, get a backlog of appointments that need to work their way through. Um, the, uh, uh, so the slides are uh, not necessarily conducive to presentation slides, but they are intended to be good reference slides for you. So they're quite descriptive, especially for those of you who have not had any experience. Uh, in this area of work before. So I'm going to take you through it. If you have any questions, uh, that somewhere between the three of us, and I'm thinking one of these two, will most likely be able to best answer uh, any questions you may have. So in Nova Scotia, we have agencies, appeal boards, boards, commissions, committees, councils, crown corporations, foundations, panels, review boards, roundtables, self-regulated professions, and tribunals, which all come into the umbrella of ABCs. The type of ABC it is is determined on how it is actually set up in its individual act or a collection or an act that covers several of them. Oh, okay. Uh, ABCs are also divided in two different uh, categories, non-adjudicative, of which there are 155. ABCs make decisions or recommendations to government on financial, uh, regulatory, business, and policy matters that have far-reaching implications for Nova Scotians. Uh, the second type is adjudicative, of which there are 29. Those ABCs review evidence, um, make findings of fact and, uh, and law, and make decisions affecting liberty, um, security, and legal rights of people. Each ABC have, has its own set of steering cr screening criteria, as well as persons uh, 
who are ineligible to sit on any particular ABC, mainly due to conflicts of interest or limits of, for reappointments. This is all outlined in, on each of the ABC's profile pages, which are located on the website noted. Oops, sorry. Currently, there are over uh, 650 uh, appointees serving on 184 ABCs. Many appointees receive little or no remuneration. So not to worry, you don't, you're not going to get 650 submissions, but there are approximately 200 to 300 um, appointments that are, that are made annually, and some will end up being a collection of appointments for any one um, ABC, and some will be individual. Uh, many appointments are reviewed by the Stand Committee on Human Resources, you folks. Uh, the Governance and Accountability Unit of the Executive Council uh, coordinate a spring and uh, fall recruitment campaign. So there'll be ads in media and uh, uh, on, in social, social media. Vacancies are advertised one year in advance and applications remain active for two years. So anybody who does apply, if they're not selected in a particular uh, campaign or a particular round, their application stays active for a, a, a two-year period. Appointments process are designed to be open, transparent, and accessible. That could take a minimum of three to four months to process applications and make appointments. The process that has been established by non-adjudicative ABC appointments is in a procedure manual approved by Cabinet in 2008. Applications are received, screened, selection packages are given to the Minister's review and selection of appointees, once selections are made, submissions are filed with the Executive Council Office and Cabinet considers the proposed appointments. Um, House of Assembly Standing Committee on Human Resources, established by Rule 60 of the Rules and Forms of Procedure of the House of Assembly. The reviews, reviews and approves or not uh, candidates for appointments um, to ABCs where the Governor and Council or Minister has discretion in making appointments, nearly non nearly all non-adjudicative appointments. Once approved, OICs or ministerial appointments are prepared and signed and issued. So any of you that are fans of the Big Bang Theory, this isn't quite one of Sheldon's maps, but it uh, may look like it a little bit. So the appointments process uh, is essentially the same, but the, it, it based on the board. So there's vacancies that are posted. Um, the ECO coordinates semi-annual advertising, as mentioned. Uh, applications are received uh, by online ABC application system and email. Um, we do still uh, receive some by mail, uh, by which if, uh, if people don't have access to technology, that uh, uh, someone will key it in, but that's becoming less and less as time goes on. Uh, applications are, are reviewed by screening panels. Um, uh, ministers select proposed appointees from qualified applicants. Executive Council considers and approves. HR Committee considers and approves, approves uh, proposed appointments. And then OICs are, uh, uh, and ministerial appointments are made. So we're hoping that by the time it all gets to you, that uh, we've done uh, uh, all our homework and it uh, should be a fairly smooth process. But clearly, this is a decision-making group, so and those, those things are still left up to you. So that's it, uh, 10, uh, ABC's 101, and if you have any questions. Thank you very much for the uh, informative overview. If you have a question, just make contact with me, and I'll keep a ledger here, and uh, I think we have one. Ms. Coombs. Yes, thank you uh, for the presentation. Uh, you mentioned um, a, a backlog. So I just want to know um, what is the vacancy what is the vacancy rate or that backlog number if you have an even approximate? Uh, well, the, the, uh, the intent. Yes. Oh. Ms. Stone. Uh, the intent is to have awareness of positions that a year to fifteen months in advance. So uh, when I say a backlog, um, because uh, um, through the election and such, this committee didn't meet. Uh, uh, so we have ones that are getting close to being imminent because we usually prepare it uh, in advance. So that's where, uh, that's where we are and why, largely. 
Mr. Tuwali. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, uh, what I'd like to know is, uh, is there any uh, structure that part of your committee to uh, do some kind of outreach to attract these committees and these appointees for diverse community? And if there is such, uh, what does that look like? Thank you. Ms. Stone. There, uh, to say that there's an active intent to recruit um, or have a diverse um, representation um, is largely, there, there is some work that needs to be done by the individual ABC. Uh, then what we do, though, is we ask for that in the application if, for people to self-identify. Uh, so if I'm reading or if I'm understanding what you're asking is, is, uh, is there an active intent around it? Our campaign that uh, Sean and Mora and Communications Nova Scotia have developed usually has people, representative people within um, the, the number of applicants. So, uh, but as far as uh, having a fully diverse and inclusive groups of people on all of the ABCs, there's still work to be done. Mr. Clerk. Yeah, I just have a quick question. There's 184, I think you mentioned, ABCs, uh, which is a lot. And I'm just wondering if there is any kind of regular review process uh, to determine if, if membership should adjust, if, if some ABCs could be uh, done away with, if new ones are needed. Does that happen on a regular basis? Ms. Stone. Uh, that's some of the work that we're doing right now. One of the things that a, a summer project that we had while the election was going on, um, which was undertaken, um, uh, was to determine what quorum, uh, what ABCs have quorum, because sometimes if we run vacancy, uh, look at vacancies overall, that an organization may have um, a membership of 16. They may, have, on a regular basis, run eight vacancies. Uh, many of those may not have anything to do with government appointments, and their quorum is, might be six. So what we're trying to get at, if your quorum is six, then what is the actual number of, vac of uh, board members do you need? Um, we have been trying to uh, make sure that the government appointees, the ones that c come through this committee, are, are on time and, and up to where they should be. But your question about, like, are there some ABCs that are on the books that may have been dormant, or uh, that's a project that we're currently working on for 20 to 2022 to try to get at some of that so that we're not having uh, multiple ones that are there that haven't met in a very long time or have become redundant or have integrated. So it's trying to get a better handle on that. Um, Mr. McDonald. Just following up on uh, my friend's qu comment, do you look at if there's eight, nine, that they're staggered versus all at the same time? Or, uh, in, you know, instead of changing a whole board, actually having like only a third of it every year, is that something that's in the hopper to be looked at? Ms. Stevens. Um, what happens when we have vacancies is um, within the act or the regulations, it's determined how long the um, appointment is for, two years, three years. Sometimes a minister and the executive council have uh, leeway in up to three years or up to two years. Um, so they can then stagger those appointments. And over the years, they have become staggered. So if everybody is proposing a slate of, um, say, eight members, and they have variants, they will say, okay, these people are appointed for two years, these people for three. Um, but if they don't, they have to be three-year appointments. So sometimes you'll see ministers um, suggesting that, okay, six months from now, I'm going to appoint two more people. So they wouldn't fill their whole slate at once. They would wait to help stagger them. But we are limited in the act or the regulations when it determines how long those appointments can be. Mr. McDonald. Thank you. Just a quick follow-up. So when you say the act, you mean each individual ABC's act? Or which one? Is that what you're referring to? Ms. Stevens. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Diwali. 
thank you for your, your answer. Uh, I'd like to put a motion for the committee uh, in uh, Mr. Stone's uh, uh, answer for my question. Uh, I'd like the committee to put a, a, a written letter for the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the committee to, to request to come up a plan, action plan, uh, how in the future uh, they can uh, uh, come up with an action plan that will indicate uh, to do uh, an, an outreach action and bring it back for the committee for the next meeting. Thank you. So we have a motion on the floor. Is everyone clear with the motion Mr. Diwali is asking? Mr. McDonald. Just for clarity, um, the way the motion says is that it will be done by the next meeting, which is tentatively next month, which is completely, I would guess, unrealistic on the demands of what's going on. So obviously if the, me if the intent is for that to be done and have substance by the next month, I don't see it working. So unless somebody can explain to me, but I mean, the next meeting from my understanding is six weeks away based on what we're looking at. They just may not. So the problem for me is by putting the deadline and telling staff to have it done within to it without knowing what their current workload is. Uh, I don't mind the intent, but right now with that date onto it, I don't think it'd be realistic. Thank you. Ms. Hansen. Thank you. I just want to point of clarity because I, I am familiar with the ABCs and I just kind of want to um, just make sure that this is correct. So before any of the, um, the applicants get to mm -hmm. your desk, um, they're already screened and there's already a process that happens um, within their boards or councils or groups um, that are bringing them forward. So that would be the outreach piece is what I'm understanding that's already being done. And then as well, the appointees come from the minister um, on that end. So that's already another outreach piece that is happening. So, I mean, there are a number of strategies that are already happening via outreach. And I just want to clarify that as well because um, um, it, it goes through a number of different processes before it actually ends up on your desk. Mr. Diwali. Uh, just, uh, uh, just to make it clear uh, what I'm asking, first of all, uh, thank you, uh, John, for uh, your, uh, your point. Uh, that's true. My intent was not uh, tomorrow, but just an action to take place. Uh, uh, could be a month, could be two months, uh, uh, as you mentioned, depending on the, the committee's uh, uh, workload. But my point is uh, uh, take that action. And, 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 and to look this issue and to come up with an idea and a strategic plan that will be uh, uh, fruitful uh, to adapt and uh, to attract uh, more diverse candidates. Thank you. My apologies, Ms. Stone. I think you had your hand up. I, guess, uh, I, I just want to um, clarify something. So what we do as an extension of the staff that support executive council is basically manage the process. So the, um, in, in terms of trying to um, have a more diverse collection of people or representation on those 184 agencies, boards, and commissions, and I, and I don't mean to be in any way passing the buck, I just want to make sure that we're, we're clear on what our role is, that it really comes to those agencies, boards, and commissions themselves. So the instigation of it, so if any of you sit on some of those or you have people that sit on them, it's important that they are, um, and I don't want to single any of them out because, I, because uh, I, I, I may misrepresent what it is they do, but it's up to them to largely be advocating for a more representative, pop, uh, representative uh, board membership or committee membership. It also clearly does come, uh, so the role, the, uh, the cog that we play in this is that we work at trying to have the campaigns and messages to foster, encourage, demonstrate that they, there are committees of uh, diversity and ethnic uh, and inclusiveness. 
but it really comes down to uh, how much the ABC does itself. So yes, there is. Uh, so in many of these committees uh, that actually exist, the amount of government representation, or when I say government, or government appointments, or uh, appointments made through order and council or by the minister, sometimes is a very small amount. It may be two people on a 20-person committee. So in the work that we do in trying to ensure, so having a broad representation and trying to get the, camp the two campaigns, the spring and fall, that message out to as broad a uh, section of the community as possible and encourage and making it uh, as easy as possible for people to apply. As I said, if people don't have the ability to key in or apply themselves for whatever the circumstances, if they call, and I've seen both Maura and Sean sitting uh, at, the, at their um, uh, computer and typing in their responses so that they have assistance with that. Again, that's not, that's only, that's anecdotal and that's not a large measure. So, uh, so we can certainly come back and say what it is we do uh, in our, our little spot uh, of it, uh, but it is a, a broader, like what you're asking for or what you're suggesting that's needed, I, we agree with you that it, there more work needs to be done. There is a limited amount of what we can do, but it, it also goes beyond to a broader community of trying to uh, respond or encourage or entice people. Um, and that, there's as, uh, that there is as good a selection of qualified people that, as we can put together that makes its way to the various ministers for their appointment. I don't know if that, I'm, I'm not sure if that satisfies uh, what you're looking for, but it goes beyond us of what, uh, but there is a role clearly that we play and we'd be happy to come back and speak to that. Uh, Mr. Diwali. So that's what I'm looking for. Uh, I think uh, uh, to your point, uh, uh, I know for the fact uh, you have a limitation, uh, you have a role and responsibilities. Uh, but I don't think uh, we as a uh, province, uh, we as elected officials, uh, as, uh, you know, also uh, to your role, uh, we're interconnected each other. And we have a role to play each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, my understanding is the vision of this government uh, to attract uh, a diverse community, uh, to welcome uh, more immigrants for this province, uh, and this kind of action is a p part of that piece that connected one another. So what I'm asking is just how we can make things better and what actions that can we take in order to attract more candidates who reflect the community that we come from. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ms. Coombs. Thank you, and I and I and I appreciate it, and I and I and I do support uh, support your motion. I'm just my clarification is that um, the motion that I have in front of me um, says um, report back in six months. Is that the timeline yeah, sure. that you were? That's just the motion I have in front of me. So I was sure. looking for a clarification sure. on that. Yeah. If that was correct. That's correct. Okay. Thank you very much. For clarification, uh, Mr. Tuwali, could you read your motion again, please? I would like to put forward a motion that committee writes a formal letter to the Executive Council Office to request for a strategic to be put in place for approaching underrepresented community in Nova Scotia and ensure more diverse applications are brought forward for the agency. The board and the commission appointees will also request that the Executive Council report back in six months time for the next agenda, uh, next agenda setting meeting. Thank you. Do we have any other comments or Ms. Stone? Uh, <clears throat> pardon me, can I just get clarity on that? So it's for uh, an action plan, not necessarily for a results plan. No. Okay, thank action you. Plan. Okay. Mr. Diwali. Uh, you're right, it's just action plan. Any further discussion on the motion? Mr. McDonald. So, uh, and I've got the email that came in for the motion. So the motion says for strategy, but you really mean an action plan, which, because those are two kind of different. And I, 
a strategy is an idea, an action plan actually says here's the things being done unless I misunderstand the two terms. So um, and I, that's my problem. Well, no, and I, I may have confused it. So, I, and that's what I just want to know. Is the mover expecting that in six months that it's going to be a roadmap of exactly how it's going to be, or is it what's in place today, what can be done? I'm just trying to get some direction on this. Thank you. Mr. Diwali. I'm not here, uh, first of all, to, uh, to create a problem. <laughs> I'm here to, come to look for a solution. And uh, if anybody in this table could have a better solution that I'm interested in, uh, I'll look forward to listen. Uh, whether you look this as a strategy or action plan, we all know what we are looking for. And, and I really believe uh, if we have a good intent, we should not entangle for language. Uh, Mr. Stone, I know exactly, I'm sure you get my message, what I'm looking for. Uh, it's an open heart. There's no uh, political agenda. And also, uh, what I'm looking for is the best interest of this province. Thank you. Mr. McDonald. So with um, my friend uh, Ali's gone, uh, is this something that we can put off to next month so we can get it ordered properly? I've been in politics for many years, and any person will tell you, just because you intend something, somebody will read the writing, and my friend is nodding going like that, because I'd like to get it exactly right, because I do agree. We, we do need to make more diverse. I want to make sure we don't ask staff to go out and do a report. And when it comes back, we're going like, oh, this isn't really what I wanted to hear. This is what I expected. So I'm just wondering if, um, if you'd be willing to defer this till January's meeting, which is the next one, and get it taken care of. Because if we can get the wording right, I think I don't see why you wouldn't get unanimous support. I'm just nervous onto it because, again, it's what's in the words, and that's what people go off. Um, and anybody in this room would have one view. Somebody watching this would have a different view, and that's just my comment. Thank you. Mr. Diwali. Yeah, John. Uh, I think with the same page, I trust you. If, if we believe this is the right things to do it, I'm giving you uh, the privilege to actually come up with an action plan that actually will produce a, a fruitful uh, product, uh, 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 benefit for this province. Thank you. Can I ask for a motion to defer this agenda item to the next meeting? Mr. McDonald. I apologize, Mr. Chair. With politics, you should remember, wait till the mic's on. Um, I move to defer this to the meeting in January 2022. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Nays. Motion carried. Do we have any other questions for the uh, our guests today? Hearing none, I'd like to I'd like to thank you for your time. Thank you for the presentation. I can invite you if you wish to stay. If if not, you, you're free to go. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, I believe Mr. Hebb has uh, a few comments. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm not going to. Um, generally, there are there are rules that apply to all the committees that are the same, but there are some special considerations for this committee, and, and I thought I would uh, mention those. Um, just a few. Uh, one thing the committee may do that's set out in, in the um, rules is the committee may interview prospective appointees. But I'd like to point out that I've been here a long time, and it's never happened. Um, the committee. Unlike other committees, the committee must meet at least once every month, even if the House is paroled. Mm -hmm. uh, the committee, and this is another issue that has come up, the committee is not entitled to know who the candidates are uh, that the government uh, or the minister uh, are not recommending. Uh, your sole job is to look at whether this is an appropriate candidate or not, this particular person for the job. Uh, the information you have about the candidates is confidential. 
Uh, in the case of someone who's remunerated $100 or more a day, the resume is made public, but not for anybody else who's not paid or is paid less than that amount. And it is highly recommended that you never give out that information, even in the case of the $100 or more. If someone is looking for that information, it should come from the Executive Council Office. And there are two good reasons for that. One is you may not know whether the appointment has actually yet been made, because you're not making the appointment. The appointment is made by others. You are approving them to be able to make the appointment. And secondly, you may not have the, the right information, and so you may give out information when they are not paid the $100 or more. So it's, you should refer them to the Executive Council Office to, to give it out and not do it yourself. Uh, and the only thing, uh, other final thing was that in Rule 60, Subsection 2, Clause C, there are some terms of reference. They go on for several pages, and there's quite a few details, some of the things I might have touched on. Others uh, I'm not going to get into, but there's quite a bit that you don't find for any of the other committees. There's these terms of reference that are quite extensive. And that's all I have to say, unless you have questions. Thank you, Mr. Hebb. Agency boards and commission appointments. Do we have any business or discussion? Ms. Sheehy Richard. Um, for the Department of Municipal Affairs and Housing, I move that Eldon McDonald be appointed as a member of the Municipal Finance Corporation as the NSFM rep. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Contrary minded, nay. The motion is carried. Mr. McDonald. For the Department of Natural Resource and Renewa uh, Renewables, I move that David Bly, David McLaughlin, Sylvain Allier, Carolyn Johnson, and Brad Hodgson's, Brad being the East Hans rep, be appointed as members of the Shubenacadie Canal Commission. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. aye. Contrary minded say nay. That motion carries. Thank you. Is there any other business? No. Okay. Organizational. So in, in, the past, um, in the past years, this committee typically met on the last Tuesday of the month at 10 a.m. to noon, is that okay? Seeing okay? Okay. Um, meetings during the summer months, okay, this committee is mandated by the House to meet at least once in the calendar year, if only for appointments. Oh, each, sorry. <laughs> each, each month, uh, if only for appointments, the ABCs, and during the House sittings in the summer months, July and August, it normally meets only to consider ABCs and does not invite witnesses. Agree to continue? Okay. Uh, the procedure for questioning witnesses. This committee follows the same pattern as other standing committees. Members will take turns asking questions two at a time. A question and a follow-up. And you can raise your hand or somehow indicate that you have a question to me and I can keep a tally similar to what we were doing so far. Uh, are we okay to continue that way? Yeah, thank you. Okay, the agenda setting procedures, a little further into the, uh, oh, Mr. Ritzy. Um, I'd like to make a motion on agenda settings. I move the government caucus will get three regular or emergency topics per six meeting rotation. The official opposition will get two regular or emergency topics per six meeting rotation. And the third party will get one regular or emergency topic per six meeting rotation. The standing committee will rotate through topics using the following order, government, official opposition, government, third party, government, official opposition. Once the list of six topics is exhausted, the chair of the committee will hold another agenda setting meeting that will follow the above rotation. Mr. Ritzy, would we have flexibility just for witness availability to swap if we can't uh, locate, get the witnesses lined up? Mr. Ritzy. Yes. Okay, is, is everyone clear the motion on the floor? Is there any further discussion? 
No. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded, nay. That motion carries. If, uh, if an outside party makes a request to appear, uh, how does the committee want to address that? Ms. Coombs. Uh, thank you. Um, and my, I, I think we should go with what we've been doing in a few other uh, committees that I have been involved in, and that is that, again, the request would go to the clerk. The clerk can bring it up to, bring it to us, and we could schedule them in during, um, during one of our meetings. Um, as per, uh, as per, you know, we, we have to meet every, all year long, every month anyways. And if they request to meet, goes to the clerk, comes back to us, and we schedule them in. And I think that's, we should just continue that way, rather than it coming off of one of our agenda items. Is there further discussion? Mr. McDonald. Just, just a question. Um, is it the intent that if, any person makes the application is just approved or it's coming to this body to confirm it's going. Um, and of course, maybe because I'm new to ABCs, it'll only ever be ABCs and it's a mute issue. But I'm just asking the question, just for a process. Um, Mr. McDonald. Uh, you understand. So my question is, is it the intent that if, if, if an organization, which I assume is going to be an ABC, they will make the application to the clerk, the clerk will then just schedule it? Or am I misunderstanding something? Oh, okay. That's why I'm confused. Sorry. I, I think this is just power for the ABC. So if a, a local organization such as the YMC or whatnot wanted to uh, apply um, for a, a meeting, they could. Okay. Is there... Thank you. Is everyone okay with that? No. Seeing, seeing yeses. Okay. So committee documents such as correspondence are always emailed to all members as soon as they arrive, and then the morning of the meeting has happened today. The clerk emails you all the committee documents in a batch, agenda, correspondence, a list of proposed topics, etc. Uh, if members want a printed copy at the meeting, uh, they are invited to bring their own. This practice started because of the COVID-19 pandemic and has continued because the clerks find it more efficient and environmentally friendly than having a stack of papers. Uh, does the committee wish to agree with this, this current uh, practice? Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Seeing yes, okay. We will Yes, here we go. Um, agenda setting. So members should complete should have their complete list of proposed topics. Does, does everybody have their, their list of proposed topics with them? Is there any discussion? Ms. Sheehy Richard. Um, I move that the PC caucus topics for the consideration of the committee be read as topics one, two, and four of the sheet uh, of the list that were passed out. And these are first, the strategies to attract and retain people to rural areas. We bring in as our witnesses representative from the Department of Labor, Skills, and Immigration, Deputy Minister Ava cess play um, and secondly strategies to prevent workplace injuries we bring in our witnesses representatives for the department of labor skills and immigration deputy minister uh, ava kessel senior executive director of safety gary o'toole and chair of the workers compensation board nova scotia saeed el dahari uh, third and fourth on the list Promoting healthy living in students, we bring in as our witnesses representatives from the Department of Education and Early Childhood Development, Deputy Minister Ava Kelsey. Thank you. Is there any discussion? I think there is, Ms. Coombs. 
Uh, yes, um, my hope was to stop that so that we could go one by one. <laughs> um, because I think putting all of them on the board right now um, gets a little confusing when people want to have a discussion about the topics. So if we could start with topic one of the PCs, which is the strategies to attract and retain people to the rural areas, and we'll have a discussion on that, and then go, um, then we'll go topic by topic, if that's, <laughs> if that's more helpful to the rest of us. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so the proposed witness for the PCs is the Department of Labor and Skills and Immigration. Pardon uh, me. In order to, to continue with the amendment of the motion, yes. we would need unanimous consent. Do we have unanimous consent to amend that motion to do it individually? Ms. Coombs. Um, I would like to, uh, we would like to propose to add um, as an amendment, so motion to amend, to add a uh, representative from now, from now Lun Lunenburg County. Um, it's a local organization working towards population growth in Lunenburg County, as well as a representative from the Cape Breton Local Immigration Partnership. Um, the Cape Breton um, Local Immigration Partnership is a collaborative initiative um, designed to foster welcoming communities that support a full participation of newcomers in the social, economic, political, and cultural life of Cape Breton Unimogi. Thank you, Ms. Coombs. Uh, I'd just like to, re to remind the group there is only five seats at the table here for witnesses. Um, is there any discussion on... Uh, is there any discussion on Ms. Coombs' amendment? So I'll ask for a vote on the amendment. Uh, all those in favor of, Ms. of the amendment signify by saying aye. aye. Contrary minded nay. nay. Motion is defeated. Amendment is defeated. So back to the original motion, could, I, could we have, um, is there any further discussion? Seeing done. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Ms. Hansen. So, I mean, we're, we're looking at the topic and it says strategies to attract and retain people in rural areas. And the proposed wit witness is the Department of Labor, Skills and Immigration. And that's just one representation of how we can attract and retain people in rural areas. I'm just kind of confused as to why we wouldn't want to have a broader scope on the discussion of retaining people in rural areas. Pardon me, we do have, you can, um, we could discuss the motion that's on the floor, but we just voted against it. There was just a, a, a defeated amendment to that motion. So we do have a motion, Ms. Coombs. Um, and this may not pertain to the motion itself, but it does pertain to something you just that you that the chair has said, and that and I'd like to ask um, our legal counsel Gordon Hebb about this. Um, can you actually limit the? Um, can we actually limit the amount of witnesses to five? Is that in the rules? Uh, the chair has just said that that uh, there's limited to five witnesses, and I'm just wondering if that is in the rules. Mr. Hebb. It's not in the rules. I think it's a practical consideration that there's only room for pretty hard to have more than five people at, at, the, at the table, but it's up to the committee to decide. But that's, that's the practical problem. Ms. Coombs. Yes, I just wanted clarity that that was a practical uh, thing to consider and not actual the rules of the committee. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we have a motion on the floor. Are we ready to vote? All those in favor signify by saying, Mr. Ritzy. Which, uh, which motion's on the floor, so for clarity? It's the original motion that's on the floor, the first topic. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Contrary minded nay. Motion carried. Ms. Sheehy Richard. Okay. So second uh, uh, topic is a um, 
the strategies prevent workplace injuries, we bring in our, our witnesses, representatives from Department of Labor, Skills and Immigration, Deputy Minister Ava Kezaplay, Plow, <clears throat> how do you say that? <laughs> Senior uh, Executive Director, Safety Gary O'Toole, and the Chair of the Workers' Compensation Board of Nova Scotia, Saeed El Tahari. Ms. Coombs. Yes, I move to um, a friendly amendment to add um, NSGEU President Jason McLean. Um, I think when we are talking about strategy, strategy, uh, strategies to prevent workplace injuries, um, one of the best pe pe people that we can talk to are those representing workers. And that is one of, and as Jason McLean is president of the largest union of Nova Scotia, I think it'd be prudent upon us to invite uh, the largest union to speak to us about how we can prevent um, workplace injuries in the workforce. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? So just, just for clarity, we're going to be voting on uh, Ms. Coombs' amendment uh, to Ms. G's Richard's uh, motion. So all those in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye. Contrary minded, nay. nay. The motion is defeated. Any further discussion on Ms. Sheehy Richard's original motion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Contrary minded, nay. Motion carried. And Ms. Sheehy Richard. And our, our third topic is uh, promoting healthy living in students. We bring in our witnesses, representative from the Department of Education, Early Childhood Step, uh, Development, Deputy Minister Kathy Montrevel. Ms. Coombs. Thank you. And uh, again, I will say, um, when we are having topics, before I move my amendment, when we are having topics, and I've said this in another committee, um, as all my motions were voted down. When we are putting forward topics to this committee, what we want to have is the most robust conversations mm -hmm. we can have so that we can actually do the work for Nova Scotians. And by, not, by only contacting government agencies, departments, what we are doing is actually stifling the conversations that we could have, mm -hmm. that we could have as a committee that it is not just a rubber stamp committee, that is not just a committee hearing from government, but is actually hearing from people that, repre that represent workers and others in, in Nova Scotia. And, again, and I will say this because I've been noticing this consistently happening in committees where the PCs, and no, I mean no offense to this, but I'm going to point it out, continuously bring up government departments, but never bring up organize or never call for organizations unless it's workers comp to talk to talk to committees to have a robust conversation and to get real answers for real questions from all perspectives. And I think we are really missing an opportunity to hear from others doing the work. Um, I'm going to go before I do my amendment. I'm going to say this: when you're talking about retaining the rural areas and to not invite rural organizations, that is wrong, in my opinion. To talk about strategies to prevent workplace and not invite the, those representing workers again is wrong. So I'm going to ask this: I'm going to ask you to please consider this amendment because it is very important to have a robust conversation on these topics. And that is, I move to amend that we add representatives from the Minimum Wage Review commission, Committee. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. Oh, promoting, I'm sorry. It's the promoting, what was it? Nourishment. It was Nourish. addressing? Nourish. It was the Nourishing Nova Scotia, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay, where am I? There we go. All right. It was, so I act that we, um, uh, that we add Nourish Nova Scotia's executive director, and the Ecology Center for Community Food Coordinator. And uh, I will say this about Nourish Nova Scotia, is a registered not-for-profit supporting healthy food environments for children and youth. So if we're gonna be talking about li uh, promoting healthy living in students, let's talk to 
organizations that are actually promoting and doing that work for students, which is Nourish Nova Scotia and the Ecology Center uh, Action Center that does community food coordination. I, I think it is extremely important that we consider in order to have a true robust conversation on promoting healthy living mm -hmm. in our students. And so I, with that, I will, um, I will see my time. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, we're good. we have a motion on the floor to amend um, the original motion. So we'll be voting on the amendment. All those fa in favor of the amem amendment signify by saying aye. aye. Contrary minded, nay. nay. That motion is defeated. We have Ms. Sheehy Rocher's original motion for to add, um, add, add the fourth topic. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Contrary minded, nay. Motion carried. Mr. Clark. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm, I move that the first uh, liberal topic for the committee be the, the first liberal item on the agenda here. Uh, topic is progress reports on the implementation of the Canada-wide Canada child care agreement and the excellence in ECE strategy. Proposed witnesses, Deputy Minister of the Department of Education and Early Childhood Development and Association of Early Childhood Educators, Nova Scotia. Ms. Coombs. Yes, thank you. Um, we're pro I propose we, uh, to add an amendment and to uh, uh, request rep a representative from Child Care Now Nova Scotia. Child Care Now Nova Scotia is a member-based organization dedicated to advocating for publicly funded, inclusive, quality, nonprofit child care, in the, um, child care system. And so I would ask if my liberal colleagues would, uh, would consider adding them to the list. Is there any debate? Mr. Clark? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd just like to make a quick comment. Uh, while I appreciate my colleagues' intent and, and friendly notions here behind the amendment, and I believe there will be one for the second topic we propose as well. Uh, being opposition members, I think we all realize that our, our time is somewhat limited uh, in the House, in committee, and so on. And so it's important to us, as I'm sure it's important to the members of the NDP caucus, to have uh, the witnesses that they choose uh, allotted as much time as possible. So that's just my comment. Thank you. Is there further discussion? Ms. Hansen. Um, I just wanted to also mention that the Deputy Minister is also going to be there um, in, in, in another meeting as well. And, and I do respect that you know, um, time is valuable. So I just kind of wanted to make a note of that because the Deputy Minister is, is, will be there as well on another occasion. So I just wanted to point that out. Is there any further discussion? So we have uh, an amendment of the original motion on the floor. So we'll be voting on the amendment. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Contrary minded nay. nay. The motion is defeated. Mr. Clerk. Oh, wait, we have an original motion on the floor. It gets kind of confusing. Um, is there further discussion on the original motion to add uh, the first topic for the Liberal Party? Seeing done. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded nay. That motion is carried. Mr. Clark. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And the, and the second, I move that the second topic for the Liberal Caucus be the second item on uh, our section of the agenda, uh, addressing affordability for post-secondary students in Nova Scotia post-COVID. Proposed witnesses being uh, the Deputy Minister of the Department of Advanced Education and representatives of students, Nova Scotia. Thank you. Do we, Ms. Coombs? This is getting predictable, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> we like to do our, we, I like to, we like to do our homework. Um, so with that, I propose, um, and I, I'm just gonna talk to um, a, a point that my colleague made earlier about our witnesses, and I really don't consider them 
um, you know, from the NDP caucus, just our witnesses. I consider them all of our witnesses so that we can have a robust conversation around the table. So with that, I'm gonna ask this amendment. Um, we amend to um, also invite the Canadian Federation of Students Nova Scotia. Um, the CFSNS um, has over 10,000 members across the Maritimes that represent representatives at NASCAD, King's College, MSVU, um, St. Anne, uh, CBU, and Dalhousie. And, I th and Students Nova Scotia does excellent work. But I think that not including the Canadian Federation of Students Nova Scotia, we're missing the other representatives around the table to give a more robust uh, conversation about the members that they all represent. So News Nova Scotia represents some universities, but they don't represent all the universities, just like um, the Canadian Federation represents some, but not all. But together, they represent all of them. So I, I ask that um, my colleagues accept this amendment. Thank you very much. Just for clarity, Ms. Coombs, I see on the, the uh, proposed witnesses is students, Nova Scotia, the representatives from there? Or are you proposing? I'm proposing, oh, I'm proposing Canadian Federation of Students to be added along with those representatives from students, Nova Scotia. Thank you for clarifying that. Is there further discussion? Okay, we are gonna vote on the amendment to the original motion. So all those in favor of the amended motion signify by saying aye. aye. Contrary minded nay. No. That motion is defeated. So we have an original motion for Mr. Clark on the floor for the liberal choice number two. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Contrary minded nay. That motion carries. Ms. Hansen. Thank you so much. We would like to put forward um, the teacher workloads and impact on student achievement and teacher recruitment and retention. And for that, the proposed witnesses are the Department of Education and Early Childhood Development and the educator, Educators for Social Justice. Is there any discussion on the motion? Mr. McDonald. Just, just a question to my friend of course. Um, you're not listing the representative who it is just the body so it's you're happy with who's ever available Every, everyone else I've seen deputy man I just want to make sure so it just says Department of Education Childhood Development where when I seen it before it listed the specific position so I, I just wanted to make sure for clarity if, if if you meant to clarify it or if not if you're good with who's staffing it in thank you Ms. Hansen Thank you for that. Um, it would be either the deputy minister or whoever is available to be able to give that information based on um, the, the proposed topic. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded nay. That motion carries. Okay, our next meeting will be, oh, sorry, is there any other business of the committee? No. Our next meeting will be Tuesday, January 25th at 10 a.m. until noon, subject to the committee approval, uh, topics and witnesses will be announced. Is everyone okay with that date? Okay. And hearing such, um, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody.